Hey guys, Proper English here. It's been a while since I posted a video, but I've been redstoning again, and in fact I've been working on the GPU project again, so I thought I'd give you an update and show you a new component. You can actually see that I've been quite busy. These are all components for the GPU. But today we're going to focus on this right here. Now, one of the big challenges with this GPU project is going to be moving lots of data really quickly and storing it in a small area. So we're going to be getting into some data compression using analog. And today what I'm going to show you is some analog serial RAM. So let's start with a demonstration. What I've got over here is an 8x8 array of 64 binary bits. Now you can imagine that these bits are coming from another part of the GPU that renders the image. So we've put together an image and we're sending it over here so that it can be sent to some memory for storage. So what I've done is I've grouped these inputs into sets of four. So we've got a four bit number and we use a binary to analog converter to change that four bit number, that four binary bit number into a one hex bit number. So we've compressed that data. Now then we're going to serialize those hex bits and send them over to some RAM here. Now I'll point out that this is parallel serial. So I've got four serial lines that divides up the work. So it's a bit faster than sending all of these hex bits over one serial line. And when I press this button, you'll see the data appear over in these lamp lines. So now we've saved our image, our compressed image, into this 16 cell array of analog serial RAM. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information and I'm going to read it into some memory cells over here and we're going to see it displayed on the screen. What's going to happen is the analog information is going to get decoded into binary and we'll see our image. So we're going to decompress the image and we'll see what it looks like. And there we go, we've got our creeper face. Now let's take a look at the individual cell for this analog serial RAM. The analog serial RAM cell has three major components. It's got an analog memory cell, that's what stores the data. It's got an analog serial decoder, that's how we write the incoming data to the memory cell. And then it's got an analog serial encoder, that's how we read the data and send it elsewhere. Now I've compacted this pretty substantially, so it's sort of difficult to see what's going on. But if you want to see how analog serial works, I did a video on it almost a year ago. So you can check that out. I'll post a link to that in the comments. And of course, I'll also have a schematic of this guy right here. Now, if we fly over to the array, we can see how it stacks up. It's pretty compact. It's four by five by six in terms of its stackability. So we've got four in this direction, five vertically, and then six this way. I almost got this dimension to five, but there's one point that conflicts over here. And so maybe I'll resolve that, maybe I won't. But what's important is that this requires 16 cells, whereas if we were storing it in binary, we'd require 64 cells, and those cells would not be much smaller than this, so we're saving a lot of space. Now, this is going to be my major storage system for the GPU, but it also has uses in a CPU. You could use this for long-term storage because, you know, if you've got data sitting around for a while, there's really no need to have it all in binary. If you can compress it and then have one fast decompression event, then you can store a lot more data in a small space. So, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to be posting more videos. I've got this whole plot full of GPU components. The next one that I'm going to be focusing on is over here. This is the loop for my new ellipse drawer. 
and I'm going to go get to work on that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.